with how the book of Proverbs, you really look at, it's the Father and the Spirit talking with the Son. Mm -hmm. Is really what's going on there. And it's them talking about the life that they have in themselves yeah. and where it comes from. And then it's them talking about the spirit of the Antichrist, which is the loose woman. And they're talking about staying away from the loose woman. And they're talking about how grace can be worn like an ornament around your neck. Talking to Jesus. And that grace will guard your heart from the wisdom of the serpent. And it's, it's many of the Old Testament scriptures are like that. You know, like in Exodus where God says, uh, the feast of unleavened bread, afflict your soul and do no work. That's the father and the son talking. Soul just means flesh. It means let your, let your flesh die and do no work. I mean, don't enlist your own ability to have life. And so Jesus performed that on the cross. And we say perform, I use that word loosely, but what he did was he rested in that truth on the cross. Right? And he fulfilled that. And that's the father and the son talking to one another. That's much less about God commanding people to do something and God and Jesus talking and a truth being revealed to the people. Because really, who is Jesus? Oh, Israel. Right? Well, who was God telling to afflict their souls and do no work? Israel. You see? And so there's a whole picture of Jesus and the law, God talking to Jesus through the law and the commandments. And, and we tend to just look on it carnally and, and don't see that. Yeah. And don't see that Jesus was hearing the Father yeah. speak directly to him through many of these things. And guess what? He wasn't hearing, thou shalt not, yeah. thou shalt. <laughs> thou shalt not, <laughs> thou shalt. <laughs> thou shalt not, yeah. thou shalt. That's not what he was hearing. No. He was hearing the spirit of the law. Yeah. Which the spirit of the law was contained in what God the Father thought of him as the Son. What's contained in the spirit of the law is who he was. What was contained in the spirit of the law was what kind of a being he was. And what, as, and, and being a, a human, how could a human have life? What was contained in the spirit of the law was the promise from the Father that he would never forsake him. That he would never turn his back on him. And he would never suffer him to see a corruption. But he would raise him up. See, these are the things that Jesus was reading in what we call the Law and the Prophets, right. this is what Jesus yeah. was sucking out of the Law and the Prophets when he read it. And what it was doing is that he was growing in the yeah. wisdom of God, which is causing him to increase in the stature of his sonship. Yeah. Till we see the climax of him actually manifesting what it means to be a son, because at all costs, he didn't lift one finger to give himself life, but he said, no, I'll trust that the Father will give me life. And we see the height of his, his wisdom being born in him, manifesting at the cross. That was the height of the wisdom of God manifesting in him at the cross. All the things he read about what the Father thought of him. All the promises he saw the Father making to him in, through the law and the commandments. All the things he saw to be true about himself. All those things were, were working in his heart and building the stature of his sonship to where on the cross, even though we think that's the furthest place from where it was, and and... That was actually the height of his sonship. Yeah. Wow. And not in the sense where it's revealed for everybody to see, but in the sense where the son actually manifested himself. Yeah. The height of it was on the cross yeah. because everything came at him and said, you don't have life. And what's more, that guy ain't going to give it to you. Where's he at now? You see? Mm -hmm. Now, to walk in sonship means you know where that guy is. You know he's promised you life. You know he's never left you, nor will he ever. You know he won't hide his face from you. And that br brings forth sonship in your heart. And that was the height of Jesus because everything else told him something opposite. How many, how many, I mean, even the whole church 2,000 years later will all tell you God forsook Jesus. The whole church will tell you that. So now imagine Jesus on the cross being persuaded that the Father hadn't forsaken him. You see the way a son thinks. A son cannot actually even believe that the Father has forsaken him, no matter what should happen. Because for the Father to forsake you would mean that now you don't have life. And if you don't think you have life, then you can't now rest. You're going to be busy working to have the life. And so Jesus, a son, can never believe that they've been forsaken by the Father, nor can they ever believe they lack what they need for life. They can never believe that the Father's promise to them is void. They can never believe those things. Now, they can be pressed in upon and feel the weight of things in the world 
trying to convince them of something else. They can feel that. And he most certainly felt that on the cross, pressing in on him, saying, well, where, where's the Father now? What's the his promise looking like now? What I would say with that is... is